Tonight on World News, what did he know? Growing anger aimed at Pope Benedict. Tonight, the sex abuse scandal widens to 200 deaf boys in Wisconsin. They couldn't reach out for help. Midterm momentum, who has it? After the new health care law, Republicans angered or the Democrats as the president returns to where it all began. Your money tonight, we get inside empty buildings you had no idea you owned, costing hundreds of millions. Tanning ban, late word tonight, a warning for parents about teens and tanning. And American Heart, the Cinderella team and the young prince who has charmed them. Here's a hint. Remember this shot? ABC World News with Diane Sawyer. Reporting tonight, David Muir. And good evening. We begin tonight with new and major questions about what the Pope knew and when he knew it as the sex abuse scandal within the church widens. Pope Benedict was once the cardinal heading the Vatican office that handled abuse cases. And we've now learned it was during that time his office was alerted to concerns involving 200 boys at a school for the deaf in Wisconsin. Boys who were trying to communicate their fear. And Dan Harris is here to start us off tonight. Dan. David, good evening. The victims of an alleged predator priest named Father Lawrence Murphy are furious with the Pope, who they say had a chance to kick Father Murphy out of the priesthood, but simply refused. Officials back in Wisconsin, you will see a real emphasis on terms like, quote, strict secrecy and avoiding scandal. And in the end, David, they achieved neither. And a priest till the end, Dan, right? Indeed. We're going to go to the Vatican, as you know, next, where these allegations come on top of a widening scandal for the church, because as Dan mentioned, the Pope oversaw these abuse cases from every corner of the world for more than a decade. And in a number of countries, there is growing anger tonight. He didn't do enough. Jim Shudo is at the Vatican tonight. There are liberal-minded Catholics calling for more radical change, including elevating women to leadership positions and allowing married priests. Not on the table, though, David, is the Pope's resignation. That hasn't happened in more than 500 years. Jim Shudo at the Vatican tonight. Jim, thank you. Back to this country now and to health care. And the Senate today passed the so-called fixes to the health care bill. Forty-three amendments offered by Republicans were all defeated. There were some minor changes made to the bill, and the House is expected to quickly approve them later tonight. Meantime, there are new reports tonight of threats against members of Congress, and they're aimed at both sides of the aisle. House Minority Whip Eric Cantor of Virginia says a window in his Richmond office was hit by a bullet, but that he initially kept it quiet, and today he blasted Democratic leaders for not doing the same. The president, meanwhile, it seemed, was still selling health care reform today, even after his victory. He returned to Iowa, where he first sold his reform plan, but this trip is likely about more, using any momentum from his victory to buoy Democrats who may need help come November. Here's Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper at the White House again tonight. Jake, thank you. A landmark move from the Pentagon today, the biggest change in its policy toward gays in the military in nearly two decades. This is Congress debates whether to throw out Don't Ask, Don't Tell altogether. Here's Martha Raddatz. As you mentioned, David, this is really all up to Congress. All right, Martha, we know you've covered this for some time and will continue to do so. Thank you. We're going to turn now tonight to the fight to save the middle class. It was last night here we were the first to bring you those harsh words from the inspector general who keeps watch over the president's program to help struggling homeowners. He called the administration's claim of success, quote, meaningless. Well, today he took his review straight to Capitol Hill and the administration responded with changes it says will help the homeowner. Said approximately on Capitol Hill today, home. anger. This is a disgrace. The program doesn't work. The Treasury Gosh, Department knew this was coming. And we understand that issue. They announced changes. Banks will no longer be able to start the foreclosure process until they make sure a homeowner is ineligible for help. And once a homeowner says they do want help, the banks must get them a decision within 30 days. Across this country, more than 6 million Americans are now late on their mortgage, and yet just 168,000 of them have had their mortgage permanently modified in the federal program. We checked in on Lisa Vanderfin, one of the thousands who emailed us trying to modify her mortgage. She's been waiting nearly a year. I thought, well, here we go again, another promise out there that they're not going to fulfill. Well, we wanted to know after the announcement, why still so much trouble getting through, so much confusion about the new rules meant to help homeowners like her? The Treasury Department says the new rules don't fully take effect until May, which they say might explain the confusion. We will stay on top of this, reading your emails each and every night as they come into abcnews.com. In the meantime, we turn overseas now into an audio tape release today. Osama bin Laden said al-Qaeda will kill any American it captures if the U.S. executes Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the self-proclaimed mastermind of the 9-11 attacks. Al-Qaeda is not known to be holding any Americans. And still ahead here on World News this Thursday night, all of those vacant buildings you had no idea you owned. 
costing hundreds of millions of your money. There is late word tonight on tanning bed dangers. Dr. Besser is here with a warning for parents. And perhaps the sweetest story from the Sweet 16, the Cinderella team with the secret prince. And there's a hint tonight, you've met him before. With so many Americans simply trying to hold on to their homes, we got wind of something that could really get you boiling mad. In cities across this country, there sit empty buildings, many of them that you're paying for. And the bill is not cheap. Jonathan Carl is on the case, watching out for your money tonight. Our thanks to John Carl tonight. And when we come back, late word today of a sober warning for parents about teens in tanning. There could be huge changes. Tonight, there is late word from federal safety officials who are poised to crack down on indoor tanning beds. 28 million Americans tan indoors every year. And now a panel of experts is so alarmed about the dangers of skin cancer, it's making some pretty bold warnings. And so our senior medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, is here with us now. And Rich, you were telling us all just before we went on the air that this is big news. This is really big news. Many on the panel called for an outright ban in that group. And as we expected, the industry pushed back here. But what does the science say? Well, the science is clear. Let me show you how the, how the this works. Tanning beds use ultraviolet light. That causes uh, cells in your skin to produce a pigment, pigment which causes your skin to go darker. But it also affects the DNA in your cell. Um, it can cause breaks in that, in, in that DNA, which are mutations, which can lead to the formation of skin cancer. And so I'm curious, you, you mentioned these recommendations. You know how the FDA operates. How right. often do these become the rule? It would be incredibly unusual for the FDA to get strong recommendations like this and not adopt them. All right, Dr. Richard Besser, as always, thank you. And for much more on skin cancer, the early warning signs, and all of this, abcnews.com. And when we come back here on the broadcast, the sweetest story about the Sweet 16, and it just might be off the court. And he's captured the American heart before. And finally tonight here, March Madness revs up to a whole new level for the Sweet 16. And in this year's NCAA tournament, an honest-to-goodness surprise, Cornell making it far enough to go up against mighty Kentucky. And Cornell just might have a secret weapon, a young man off the court who already captured the American heart. Points allowed, if Cornell is this year's Cinderella story, then he would certainly be their prince, a young basketball player from Rochester, New York, named Jason McElwain. You might remember him simply as J-Mac. Four years ago, he was a senior in high school, manager of the basketball team. He has autism. And in the last game of the season, he was given his first chance to play. In just four minutes, he scored and scored. Six three-point shots. Tell me how it felt, though, when you started nailing those three-pointers. Never shot that well in my life. <laughs> Never in my life. We have followed J-Mac's story, and apparently so has someone else. Cornell basketball coach Steve Donahue, whose own son Matt also has autism. After that unbelievable day, the Cornell coach called up J Mac's coach to say, What a story, what a kid. And it turns out J Mac has been calling the Cornell coach ever since with advice on how Cornell can beat Temple in Wisconsin. David taking on two Goliaths. We caught up with J Mac today. The coach told me he's got a lot of faith in your eye. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not trying to take away credit from his team. But it was J Mac's text message to the coach before the Wisconsin game that had the most impact. If you don't dream to become a champion, you won't become a champion. And Cornell would win again. There's been so much talk over the last couple of years that there could one day be a movie based on that famous day in the court. Today, we simply learned of another chapter. As for the movie's title, <laughs> do you remember what you told me? Yeah. What should they call it? How does a pistol? Hot Maybe. as a pistol. Hot as a pistol. He's still sticking by that movie title. So, J Max Cornell or Diane's Kentucky? That's a tough one. I'm just going to play it safe and say goodnight. For Diane Sawyer and all of us here at ABC News, thanks for watching. Good night.